Illich is no doubt one of the smartest and most mechanically skilled players to come from North America. He's currently scoring a HLTV rating of 1.09 on Inferno against top 20 opponents, and he's the second highest rated short player just under Kickert. Hey, I'm Smirky, and today I want to look at Illich and how he plays short and long on Inferno, so let's begin. Let me give you a quick overview on how Illich plays towards A. Commonly at the start of the round, Illich will come towards short, and he tends not to throw any utility unless he's doing something special. Usually on a default round, he will throw his utility around 130. This is because he wants to have top mid control longer late into the round. It's worth noting at times, Illich may play towards long. This is because they want to switch up their setups and have Fallen peak towards short. Fallen may be somewhere else on the map, so Illich needs to hold long just to prevent the T's from going into CT. However, generally, Illich is responsible to play around short, top mid, and long. I'm going to break down how Illich plays towards short, long, and sight. I'm going to break down the different positions that he likes to play. I'm going to break down some of his utility and why he's used them. And lastly, I'm going to show you some little scenarios or situations Illich was in and how he got around it. Now enough of me rambling, let's begin. Firstly, let's look at Elige and why he chooses his positioning towards short. At the start of the round, he's going to cross through sight into short. Once Elige gets towards boiler, he's going to start shifting and he's going to start listening for information. From this position, you should be able to hear some information from mid, second mid and outside apps. So if NIP were to take top mid quickly, Elige would get the information early and could act upon it. Once again, Elige is coming towards short. He's going to go next to boiler and he's going to listen for information. However, after a few seconds, he's going to rotate off. At times, it leads like a jiggle peak boiler. A lot of players now have really good crosshair placement and reflexes. So if one of the ninjas did peak from boiler and a leech was just holding, likely he would just get deleted. So by him jiggling it, it can make it really hard for a T to hit the shot. In this round, we can see Elige is going to play a bit further back, using the distance to his advantage against the pistols. In this round, we can see Elige is going to play a similar angle. However, after a few seconds, he's going to rotate underneath porch and he should be safe from mid because of the smoke. And it's worth noting that Elige is playing this angle because of Peaky's advantage. To put it simply, if you have cover on your left and you're peeking from the right, you should be able to spot a play before they can see you. However, Elige is going to reposition into this angle right here, where he's going to use his pillar to block off the angles from mid. And because of this, he can just focus on boiler. As mentioned at the start of the video, Elige will tend to smoke off top mid around the 130 second mark. However, in this round, he's going to use it a bit early. And we can see that NIP are on an eco and Fallen is not in his position towards long. So if the NIP players decided to rush mid with their pistols, Elige will be isolated and by himself. So to try and keep top mid for a long period, he's going to smoke it off and play it safe. Once again, we're going to see Elige use the smoke early. And if you look at the minimap, we can see that Fallen is over towards that B bomb site, and Elige is in charge of holding top mid. So to prevent the push, he's going to smoke it off and play it safe. Another way to smoke off mid is by going next to these barrels, aiming at this point in the shadow, and jump throwing. I actually prefer the smoke than just standing out in the open and doing it, as there's less chance of a T swinging out as you're throwing the smoke. Once he's done that smoke, he's going to rotate towards long, just to make sure that the T's can't go into CT. If you want HE the balcony, you can come towards this box, aim here, run and jump throw. Elige may do this around the 138 second mark. This could actually take a lot of HP from the NIB players if they were jumping onto balcony. If you want to retake top mid, Elige has a really good flash that you might want to use. If you jump on top of the hay, aim here and left click throw, this flash will land really high up, blinding anyone in top mid or anyone approaching mid. Once he's done the flash bang, he's going to spam up to see if he can get a kill. And the last bit of utility is a bit of teamwork. And Elige is going to hold out this Molotov. If Fallen gets a kill or gets contact, Elige can Molotov to allow Fallen to get away safely. And the same concept could be done on Long. Let me show you a few scenarios that Elige was in and how we got around it. In this round, Elige was towards apps and he wants to leave Boiler to cross the short. However, he has the fear that someone's close mid. So to get around this, he's going to Molotov it and cross. And this will prevent giving up the 4v3 and making it even. We had a scenario where Team Liquid wanted to get information and stack players towards that B bomb site. So to help get information, he's going to throw this flashbang for Stewie and Grim. They're going to clear out long and they're going to rotate towards B. While they're rotating, it leads is going to retake map control. He's going to edge his way towards short, clearing his angles one by one before confirming that there's no one top mid. Once he has top mid, he's going to play this little dirty off angle on top of these pallets. And as I explained previously, the lead is holding a peak's advantage right now as the cover is on the left side of his eye. In this round, NRP are going to force top mid away from Team Liquid. So as a response, Elige wants to keep applying the pressure. He's going to put his back against the wall. Aim at the same level of this roof, run and jump for this grenade once to hit this marker right here. 
This Grenada will only do roughly around 20 HP to Rez. However, if you think about it, Rez is pretty much a one shot to the head with any rifles from Liquid side. Once he's thrown the grenade, he's gonna smoke off short. Then as he creeps his way over towards short, he's gonna keep an eye on that boost as the only way that NAP can get around this is by boosting or perhaps flashing through the smoke. And by Allegi's utility, he's able to keep NIP boxed in and towards top mid for roughly 30 seconds, which is worse than time off the clock. Now let me show you about long. When you're playing towards long, some of the angles can be really predictable for the T side, so it's important that you play a bit of off angles and maybe switch it up at times. In this clip, we can see Allegi is going to smoke off mid at around 127, then he's going to play a bit of an off angle right here. If the T's were to swing out of the smoke, it would be really difficult for them to kill Allegi, as Allegi is playing an off angle, and the T's will get a grey screen when they run through the smoke. However, if I fast forward it, Allegi is going to switch to the more common angle in this one right here. It's worth noting in this clip, Allegi is playing really far back, and this is so less of his body is showing. If you play closer to an angle, more of your body will show. And it's also worth noting that Allegi is holding a tight angle, likely because he wants to catch anyone peeking, or he wants to dodge any flashbangs. However, I would recommend maybe leaving the gap a bit wider for yourselves. If you want to, you can play this angle right here in front of Arches. I haven't actually seen this angle used this much, so I'm probably betting you're guaranteed to kill if you do use this spot. In this round, Allegi is going to play towards the cubby. Hamper is going to peek and Allegi will get the kill. He's then going to fall back towards the corner and start jiggling it for information. When Allegi goes back in for his jiggle, Popsy can't spot Allegi. So when Allegi peeks, he's going to get a free kill onto Popsky. If you are going to give up top mid control, you might want to play this angle towards Modo. In this round, Allegi goes for some quick information and falls back to his position. In this position, if a T was to scale up by this wall, their barrels will actually show if they're looking towards Arch. However, if a T decided to wide swing, once again, Allegi is probably going to get the kill due to Pika's advantage. However, it is worth noting, it is difficult to fall back and you might go one to one if you don't multi-frag. Now let's look at his utility usage towards long. At the start of the round, he's going to come towards long. He's going to jiggle for a second, then at round 143, he's going to try and nade the stairs at second mid. The nade isn't going to catch anyone, however, Fallen's going to be posted towards bottom mid. He's going to pull out a Molotov, and as soon as Fallen gets contact, he's going to Molotov so Fallen can get away safely. And in the same round, Allegi is going to smoke off mid after his Molotov fades, and by doing this, you will delay the take from the T's, allowing you to have top mid for a longer period. At the start of the round, Allegi wants to HE deep mid, so he's going to smoke off mid from spawn. He can do this by standing next to his bench, aiming here, and jump throwing. Allegi will make his way through long towards mid, and then he will HE deep. The device is now a one shot to the head with any rifle from the CT side. If you want to smoke off mid from Modo, you can go towards this cubby, aim here, and jump throw. This smoke will take a few seconds to land, however it is pretty good and is a safe smoke. If you're playing towards long, at times you might need to support your apps player so you can hold A for a longer period. So because of this, Allegi is going to smoke off apps, and this is going to nullify hampers for a brief period. Now let me show you some situations and scenarios towards long. In this round, Allegi is playing an off angle towards arch, and the T is going to throw a long smoke, and this smoke is going to land pretty deep, so our T could look through this if they wanted to. So to try and counter this, Allegi is going to go into the cubby, and he's going to watch the smoke. And it's worth noting in this clip, he's going to hear a pin being pulled, so he's going to play anti-flash, then his teammate in Grim will need support on the site, so as a reaction, Allegi will run over towards long, and will try flash above Modo, but unfortunately it's too late and he's forced to save. If you're playing towards long, it's really important to take initiative and get information for your team. In this round we can see Liquid don't have car or top mid control. So for Allegi to get information and see if they can make a gamble stack, Allegi is going to peak top mid, he's going to close angles one by one, before rotating off to B. Now let me show you Allegi's positioning towards the site. If Allegi wants to hold short from site, he likes to play this angle towards here. This angle is actually very commonly used by Orpus such as Device. Allegi currently has his crosser at a head height level, so if any T's decide to swing out, he should be good for one and can fall back towards the site where Grim and him can play a setup together. Once again, Allegi is playing the similar angle, however in this round Allegi is going to be jiggling it for the same reasons as said previously. In this round, Allegi is going to be on the site, and he's going to find a kill onto Device. As soon as he gets the kill, Allegi is going to go towards Nifty and get ready for an execute, and Grim is going to get ready in Pit. Currently, Allegi is using the pillar on the right side to his advantage. Because of this, the T's have to wide swing into the site, where they're open to Grim and Allegi in a crossfire. However, it is worth noting, in this round, Allegi doesn't have Pika's advantage because the cover is on the right side. And from this position, you can also hold Modo, however, you are in the open. But nevertheless, Grim should have his back, since he's holding short. 
In this round, Luigi's going to be playing towards Nifty once again, and he's going to be anti-flash. Meanwhile, Grim's going to be holding his back. If they did execute into the bomb site, Grim may be full blind, however, Luigi can assist. But soon after, he is going to rotate towards Long, as Volley needs to rotate towards B to help. In this round, Leech wants to play towards Graveyard, so he's going to help Grim by smoking off apps. Then he'll make his way over. When Leech gets towards the stairs, he's going to line himself up with his shadow. And he does this because so his head doesn't show over the wall, giving the best possible fight that he can have. Then soon after, he's going to hold towards Modo and make sure if any T's decide to jump on towards Bike, he can easily get a kill. It is worth noting in this position, you are generally good for one before being traded. In this round, NIP are going to be splitting onto the A bomb site. Leech is going to be holding towards Modo, meanwhile, Grim's going to be holding towards Short. And Elijah is going to take initiative by taking short. By doing this, he eliminates an entire pathway the T's can take on pushing onto the bomb site, and he can try hold Barkney together with Grim. However, Grim is going to die. Elijah will position himself towards this wall where he's angled towards Balcony. And from here, he's able to get a nice double kill on two of the NIP players before being traded. In this round, NAP are executing onto the bomb sign, and Elijah is playing Balcony with Grim. Elijah is going to be using Grim as a bit of a bait and letting Grim take the first contact. Grim is going to take the first fight towards Shaw and does lose it, but realistically he should be able to win that. Leech is going to get full blind and he's going to get a kill onto S-Tag before being traded. In this round, NFP are executing onto the A bomb site. Elijah is going to be blind, so he's going to retreat towards default. And to try to allow him to delay the execute or for him to take a fight, he's going to bounce his flashbang off the wall. And this flashbang will blind any T's running up short and will allow him to reposition towards Code Zero. After watching the demo against NIP, I've noticed that Elijah is kind of hard to read, and this is due to him constantly changing his positions and what he does at the start of the round. He's a bit of a passive player, he doesn't tend to go for anything aggressive and prefers to play his role in the system, and perhaps let the other players take the aggression, such as Stewie or Naf. He's also a bit supportive, because he's not anchored to a position, he's able to support his teammates if they're in a dire situation, and he's able to fill any areas on air that is open. If you have a player in a position you want me to break down next, feel free to put it in the comments below. Perhaps you're running out to smoke off door on Ancient from CT Spawn. Well, I've made a Twitter video which you can check out in the link in the description. Apart from that, thanks for watching. See you in a bit.